Developing Monitoring Plans The development of monitoring plans for resource management is an iterative process and it includes a number of vitally important steps that are part of a feedback loop system. Basically all of the components as they are developed they may inform further steps or we may need to revisit and review and possibly revise some of our objectives or our plans as we go through this process. The development of monitoring plans is covered very well in Chapter 2 of Measuring and Monitoring Plant Populations by Elzinga et al. Now the first step is to complete background tasks and this includes a number of steps First, compiling and reviewing existing information. This includes finding previous plans, any maps, any type of inventories uh, that are known and history about the site. Also, any information that's known about population and species of interest. We also need to review upper level planning documents uh, that may have regulatory power over what can be done in the area or in management of a species of concern. We need to identify um, the species that are going to be prioritized or in the case of management decisions on land, which areas may be prioritized for, uh, for treatment or management actions. Of course we have to assess financial resources that are available for monitoring and for management because this is an important um, limiting factor in a lot of the management actions that we take. We need to determine the scale and the intensity that the monitoring needs to take. And then finally, we need to review our um, background information to make sure that we've done a good job of collecting all the information that we need so that we can continue with this process. The next step is to develop management objectives and this is a very critical step because our ob objectives drive our management actions as well as monitoring activities. The management objectives, the development of management objectives is covered in detail in chapter 4 of mo measuring and monitoring plant populations for Elzinga et al. But we're going to look at each of the steps involved in developing management objectives right now. Now the first is to develop an ecological model. An ecological model gives us a baseline of information about what is known and what is unknown. And you may wonder why we need to do this. Well, if there's a critical piece of information that is missing in terms of our understanding of the way that um, the system works or the way that the population reproduces, this can identify a bottleneck in our understanding and this is important for us to know as we proceed with the planning process. We also need to identify our general management goals. Sometimes we're interested in sustainable management and production sometimes species conservation, or we may want to manage an area so that it moves towards a desired plant community. Always this step involves setting priorities and selecting the scale and intensity of monitoring. We also need to identify our general management goals in terms of the specific geographic area of interest. Are we interested in focusing on a key or critical area or in a larger area overall, such as this area that is depicted in the, by the orange line. Are our sites at risk of degradation or have they been uh, under some management so they are expected to recover? This also guides our overall management goals. We need to select an informative indicator that will provide sufficient information relative to our management goals. Sometimes these indicators are biotic, such as species of concern, 
or possibly at the, at the level of functional groups. And sometimes the informative indicators are abiotic, such as habitat indicators or soil or hydrologic characteristics of the site. We need to select the appropriate attribute that is going to inform our management objectives. These attributes need to be sensitive both to management changes and to disturbances. They, we want them to be biologically and ecologically meaningful so that they inform management. We also need to make sure that we select attributes that are technically feasible to measure and that measurements of the attributes can be repeated among different observers. We want to specify the change to be measured. Sometimes this is a direction of change, such as an increase, a decrease, or to maintain the status quo. Sometimes we are interested in quantifying an amount or in establishing a specific status of the land. In this case, we may be looking at whether the, there is some absolute value or a percent change. And oftentimes, we are, we are considering this relative to a target or threshold value. Always, what we focus on must be measurable, and it must be meaningful to management. We also have to specify the time frame in which we think that we will be able to detect a change. Usually this depends on species biology. Are we focusing on a population of, of um, species that is annual, short-lived perennial, long-lived perennial, and also the time frame relative to management. Um, this includes our ability to make decisions and implement decisions, and also in the time frame for planning purposes. When we're talking about developing management objectives, there are two main types. The first is the change trend type of objective, in which case we're interested in measuring a trend over time. An example, as given here, would be a management objective stating that we want to increase the population size of Penstemon lemmiciensis at the Iron Creek site by 50% by a specified time, in this case 2005. The other main type of management objective is the condition objective, or a target and threshold. In this case, we often want to compare the current state to a desired or an undesired state. In that case, we would be detecting the status so that we could wave a red flag and um, implement uh, management actions. The example given here is to maintain the production of perennial grasses in a particular pasture at a minimum of 600 kilograms per hectare through the year 2014. We also need to specify what we anticipate the management response will be. We should have a good idea of what we think our management actions are going to have on the resource, and we want to be able to monitor those results. We also want to specify what action or what type of management change would be taken given the results of our monitoring. So essentially, we are going into a um, going into this process with our eyes wide open. We always, at the end, want to review the developed management objective and make sure that it is realistic and in accordance with our overall goals. Now, if we think of how we're going to implement management, here we're looking at an example of an adaptive management cycle. So once we have determined what the resource objective is, the very important step here is to implement whatever management changes we are going to uh, use. Sometimes we do not change management, but still, no change in management is still a decision about management. 
Once we have done that, we design our monitoring methodology. We design the complete monitoring plan. And this is a very exhaustive process that includes, uh, at, at the ba most basic level, determining whether we want to measure qualitative, quantitative at, uh, data, or both. We also need to incorporate all elements of the sampling design. And so that includes the sample size, the area to be measured, the um, type of attribute to be measured, the methodology. All of the a aspects of sampling design are considered here because that is part of the monitoring protocol overall. We also need to determine the measurement frequency over time. So not only the season or the time of year when measurements are taken, but how often are we going to be taking these measurements? Every year, every two years, once every five years, these things need to be determined. In addition, we need to um, state whether or not our sampling locations and our sampling units are permanent or temporary. Now we have to monitor and we have to implement the monitoring. The first thing we do is we implement our monitoring as a pilot study. This is a very critical step that should not be overlooked. It's important for troubleshooting. We get to test our methodology, we get to test how feasible what we have planned is, and we also have a reality check with the time and costs involved. We also get to get some information about the precision of our measurements, and so then we can determine whether the intensity of the measurements that we're taking is sufficient to detect change with the desired precision and power that we need. And finally, we have a moment to step back and make sure that the assumptions of our ecological model are correct. Once we've done this step, then it's time to implement the monitoring as a full-scale plan. So first, we have to do it, we collect the data, and we analyze the data. The last step is to report our results. We want to assess and interpret the results relative to our goals and objectives. We do this so that we can inform management and so that we can adapt our management according, accordingly.